Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Marco and I'm a third year PhD student at the Process and Data Science Chair at AWTH Aachen University. My, uh, the topic of my PhD is uncertainty in event data. So process mining focuses on analyzing data which come from the executions of processes and this data consists in a sequence of events uh, related to a specific process case and often collected in files called event logs, which are databases that collect all the data uh, related to the execution of a process. Now, data uh, can have quality problems, of course. In real life setting, very often data is affected by um, quality problems like noise, imprecisions, missing data, and so on. Uh, our work focuses on a specific class of data anomalies called uncertainty. What we mean by uncertainty is some data that in attributes have a description of a possible range of values or possible alternatives for which uh, for um, the true value of a specific uh, event attribute. And so we deal with data which has an additional dimension of possible values for each attribute and possible different features for certain events. In this talk, I will present our tool, Proved, which enables uh, the analysis of uncertain event data without the needing to filter the data, which is an operation that, of course, loses information, and without attempting to repair um, the uncertain event log, which is also an operation with a risk of introducing further errors. Our aim instead is to analyze event data, uh, keeping the uncertainty in the log and extracting information from such uncertainty. So let us immediately jump within the tool and see how the proof tool is able to analyze um, uncertain event data without losing information. So upon uh, opening the tool, um, we are prompted uh, to select an event log from this list of pre-uploaded event logs or to upload a new one. We will now select uh, an existing one, for example, this one, and set it as the uh, current event log. And we are presented with this dashboard, which summarizes uh, the information uh, of the event log and of the uncertainty um, contained in the event log. Now. These two diagrams in the, up the upper uh, right corner show the percentage of uncertain events in the log. So uh, the number of uncertain of events that have at least one uncertain attribute, and here it is roughly 15.5%, uh, and the percentage of traces that have at least one uncertain event, here roughly one quarter, together with uh, the usual statistics of an event log, which are immediately to the left, such as the number of events, the number of traces, the average trace length in number of events, and the number of variants. But notice that variants in a certain event logs are slightly different than the ones in um, the usual notion of variants in process mining, and we're going to see, um, to see exactly what that is in a second. Then down here we have um, summary tables of the occurrence of certain activities within the process. But certain notice that certain activities have a different minimum and maximum number of time they can occur, depending on uh, on events with uncertain um, activity labels. Because some events have more than one possible activity labels, so depending on the on the outcome, on the true value of that um, of that uh, activity label, the total count for each activity can change. For example, here the activity examined casually have 105 minimum occurrences in the log and 150 maximum occurrences, meaning that 45 events have multiple possible activity labels, and one of those activity labels is examined casually. Um, this, the, these two rightmost columns here show the same data, but um, in percentage, so related to the total number of events. And we have three of these tables referring to the total uh, activities in the log, 
Um, just referring to start events of traces, which is the second uh, table, and only the end activities of, uh, of traces, the third table. Now, here on the left, there is a selector for uh, process variants, and we are going to select, for example, variant 2 of this event log, which prompts us to uh, this variant 2. We can see that it has 40 traces, and every trace has four events. And we can select one trace here, and we can already see a, a representation on the right-hand side of this diagram that shows the precedence of uh, events in this uncertain trace. So here we have an event, which is the side, which is in, a, um, in an uncertain timestamp um, relationship with this other event that has two possible activity labels, examine thoroughly and examine casually. So if we click here, on trace zero, we can see that below this uh, graph, uh, we see the table of the information of this specific trace. So first we were on the variant level, here we are on the trace level. And we can see that this, this parallelism here, this um, uncertainty on the order, is due to this event here, which has a range as a timestamp. So it might have occurred at any point in time between 7, uh, 26 p.m. and 8, 46 p.m. Um, and which, which makes us lose the order information with event one, which is um, examining casually or examining thoroughly. Now, um, the last event reject request is in a dashed line because it is indeterminate. We can see this information on this rightmost column here. Indeterminate events have been recorded, but they might have not uh, happened in reality, so we are not sure if they happened or not. Now, if we click behavior net here, we can see a very important visualization, which is a patronet that can replay all and only the uh, real, the real possible scenarios in an uncertain trace. So each um, complete firing sequence here is a correct uh, possible sequence of events that might have occurred in reality. And uh, we can see, in fact, that event E1 is has two activity labels and is represented in the net as an XOR um, gateway. So here we can either execute the exam casually or examine thoroughly. And this represents the uncertainty on activity labels. Um, while these events E1 and E2 are in an end configuration, so they can be executed in any order. Lastly, uh, this indeterminate event that has been recorded by, but might not have uh, happened in reality is, as we can see here, in an XOR uh, relationship with an invisible transition, so it can be skipped. And this gives us all the possible um, the, the, all the complete firing sequences of this net correspond to the possible scenarios in real life for this uh, uncertain trace. Now, let's um, delete this log selection and let's uh, select this, uh, this specific event log, which has a trace which has been presented as running example uh, in the paper, the paper that describes the tool. Um, and we can see that uh, this, this trace relates to the healthcare domain, and these are symptoms uh, for a patient. Um, and this structure can be then translated in a behavior net that gives us all the possible, um, the possible scenarios for this, for this patient. This is an example that is very close to what mm, might happen in reality in healthcare logs. We can also look at this from a Gantt diagram perspective, which gives us also the, the scale in time of what has happened. So we can see here that uh, splenomegaly here, this event has a very wide range uh, for a timestamp, while all the other events happen in a specific point in time. And this, this range here is the source of uh, this uncertainty in timestamp that occur here. So this event, can occur in any order um, with respect to these two events on the top. So we are going to now use this trace 
to demonstrate conformance checking over uncertain data. And if I click conformance checking here, I can select alignment. And this prompts me to select a normative model for our alignment. And this is a possible process model for, um, for the, the, the trace that we have seen. And if I set it here, I can select the trace that we have seen before. And this gives us two process models of which one is actually a process model. So the first one uh, describes the behavior of cases within a process. The second one is the behavior net, which um, describes the behavior of one single uncertain trace. And our alignment approach allows us to compute the best and worst alignment for this, uh, for this uncertain trace. And so we can see uh, the most compliant scenario, the best case possible for this trace and the worst case possible for this trace. And we can see that um, for specific values of the uncertain attributes, this uh, alignment could cost zero. So that's the best alignment, it's completely uh, compliant with the process model. But then the worst alignment might have a cost alignment of two, which is the worst case scenario for this uh, specific process trace. So this brings us to the conclusion of our talk. And we have seen how uh, our tool enables analysis and exploration within a certain uh, uncertain data without needing to filter it or repairing it, but actually inspecting the uncertainty and see, analyze what went wrong in the process. Thank you. And I am now open to any question you might have.